they want me to pay taxes. <laughs> also, this is the Halloween episode of the Church of the Movie Picture. And so, there might be graphic violence and sex. Viewer discretion is advised. <laughs> This month's object of worship is a alien movie on a budget, and Kyle McLaughlin wears a suit. This is... Hold on, hold on, hold on. Did you say alien? I did. Because if we're going to talk about alien, then let's do the not aliens Friday the 13th movie. Sweet baby Jane is that Mitch from the Divided by Werewolves podcast. None other than... So, Mitch, I understand you have a new object of worship for the Church of the Moving Picture. I absolutely do. The 2001 classic in the Friday the 13th franchise, Jason X. Classic is a strong word, Mitch. And while the Church (laughs) of the Moving Picture is is, uh, very faithful to the Friday the 13th franchise, we are not experts in the lore. So tell us why you love this movie. This movie exists in a franchise that, as you said, has already been established. But here's why it's amazing. It's because... After nine sequels, it just throws everything out the fucking window and just decides to be the most fun entry in the entire franchise. I mean, you can look at, if you want to look at the first four as one story, you can do that. And then five is a one-off. And then you can look at six through nine as the next sort of chapter in, in the history of Jason Voorhees. Then Jason X comes along and they're like you know what we've done everything else what can we possibly do and they just go full-on fucking comic book movie put jason in space that's all yeah they they do put jason in space that's true (laughs) so which one okay so which one is five five is a new beginning where there's an imposter jason oh okay so which one has got the girl with the telekinesis that is part seven. That's Kane Hodder's first time playing Jason. That's the new blood. So, okay, so that's the new blood. And Jason Takes Manhattan is six? Eight. Eight. Part six okay. is the greatest movie of all time. My personal favorite movie ever is I, Jason Lives. I really Lives. like six and seven, I think. Yeah, six Six is the is the one that makes Jason sort of a super zombie. Like, the, he gets, he's dead at the end of, say, four. Because four, like, he was still sort of mortal even if you could call him that, but that's the way they played it. And then six was the first one where he sort of becomes like a super zombie. Like he gets resurrected from by Tommy who stabs the fence pike into his chest or whatever and the lightning hits it. And from six through nine, he's sort of an undead super zombie. And Jason Goes to Hell is, is nine? Nine, yeah. Jason Goes to Hell starts with like a... Uh, I think it's the FBI or or something like that, but they sort of, they set this counselor who ends up being an undercover agent in Crystal Lake. And Jason, of course, comes after her and she sort of baits him and she's like, takes a shower or whatever. And she, you know, and he shows up and breaks the light bulb and she knows he's there. So she runs outside and leads him into an ambush by the FBI and they fill him full of bullets and shit. And they think they finally killed him. Okay. That's the one I was thinking of. I thought that was Jason X. And then Jason X started, and like, that well, kind of happened. So Jason X, yeah, it has similar things happen in Jason X as well. Like, Jason X, if you watch the um, Crystal Lake Memories, Kane Hodder says, like, in Jason X, it's it's the one where he gets shot the most. He has more bullets pumped into him in, in this one than he does any other movie. I believe that. Yeah. It's basically aliens with Jason mm-hmm. on a really low budget. Exactly. <laughs> like, that's exactly. That's exactly what it is, man. There's so many similarities. This is aliens, but instead of having the scorpion xenomorphs or whatever it is they're called from James Cameron's aliens, it's fucking Jason. Yeah, and it's crazy because... There's so many similarities that you can draw to a- from aliens to this movie. It's crazy. I really like the idea that, like, and, you know, starting with the, the, the whole sequences and Jason goes to hell is that the the government has finally come to understand they're dealing with a guy who's not human and and has special right. properties and so when Jason X opens Jason's a captive he's been He's been taken captive and he's chained up in a facility mm-hmm. that's researching why he can regenerate from death and then and yep. then David yep. Cronenberg shows up in a cameo as the director <laughs> of the facility Yes he does <laughs> to take Jason away Right and and he only did the movie he said he would only do it if they promised to let Jason kill him. So, spoiler alert, 
So there's the crazy thing about this movie is I I agree with you that they like ton of, they threw everything out the window and were like let's try something new because the movie has almost no suspense in it whatsoever which is yeah. which is crazy yeah. to me that and in terms of like gore hound it's not really that either yeah it's kind of like this action comedy with Jason in it right you know what do we do now <laughs> we, right right we've done I mean everything. this is this is sequel number nine like <laughs> like nobody's afraid of Jason. The audience is more than likely rooting for Jason. They know that. They embrace that. The guy who wrote it, uh, Victor Miller, like Victor Miller, Todd Farmer, like they're they they were just fans of the series, and they got a chance to do this movie, and they're like, you know what? We love Jason. The audience loves Jason. That's the entire reason to do this movie. Jason X is so joyous, a movie in celebrating the tropes yeah. of the Friday the Thirteenth franchise. That's, that's the perfect well, way to they, put it. I mean, as soon as so, essentially, the plot and the plot's super thin. Uh, um, Jason gets escapes from his uh, chains and then is cryogenically fro frozen by Rowan, who's played by Alexa Doig. As a she's a scientist, and she gets frozen as well when Jason like mortally injures her rupturing the the cryo chamber mm -hmm. and then they're discovered by a scientific team not a scientific team an educational team led by a professor 400 right. years later that have come to earth which is completely devastated and destroyed and they mm -hmm. stumble across the two of them and then take jason to the spaceship and they bring her back to life using nano machines jason comes back to life too <laughs> and then and then people people have sex and then <laughs> die and and then there's lots of shooting right and that's that's it that's the plot of jason x and that's a that's a super interesting uh, plot point too that the jason once he's like thawed out and they, they're like no he's dead he can't he's not coming back he's dead we're just gonna you know take some samples and whatnot and this and that and they send the older student or i guess or i don't know her his colleague whatever to do the uh to take the samples and to you know start looking at his tissue and whatnot and it's not until the two kids go off to have sex that he finally gets up yeah that's when he starts and he's like as, as, as they're starting right? to fool around he's and like, like, like and and the professor is also fucking one of his students and they're having like an S M moment right and then jason yeah. just starts twitching and right. comes to life but that's what it takes like to, he's like He's been unfrozen, and he's laid on a table, and he's gone until they start having sex. And he's like, oh, shit, yeah, what the no, fuck? Yeah, no, extramarital <laughs> sex is happening, and there wasn't any drugs being used. But yeah. but it's just like, oh, jeez, this is True. great. This is yeah. like such a, a <laughs> celebration of like the, the slasher tropes, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> it's pretty good, man. And then, so yeah, this, this is educational trip has a, a tactical squad on board for some reason. That has all kinds of, you know, right. wearing hockey pads and, <laughs> and guns to shoot Jason. And it, oh, yeah. it's really interesting because it really is aliens. It is. Really but is. Jason just picks them off. Right. right. It's the colonial Marines. So you've got you've got your your strong female lead who has dealt with Jason before. Not Ripley, but Rowan. And then you've got colonial Marines. And then you've got an android. Not Bishop, but KM. Look, KM, I don't think this is going to work. Why do you want those things, anyways? Janessa has them. Well, Janessa's real. Yes. Like it's so it's so aliens, but instead of a xenomorph, uh, a bunch of xenomorphs, you just get Jason. And the kills get more creative with the as, as they go along with the, with the killing off the soldiers, right? And and yes, funnier. absolutely. And and they just and they're it gets more puns you know like there's one point where one yeah. of the soldiers gets tossed off a ledge and lands so this is hilarious and a bit of foreshadowing is when the tactical team is introduced this guy is literally sharpening like a farmer's like rototiller like a six foot screw mm -hmm. and he's yeah. sharpening the tip of it and then later he gets <laughs> tossed off the edge and lands on it and and this is a great right. effect he just slowly spins his way down to the bottom of the screw it's gone through his gut and, and then, then one of the the cork screws kill. <laughs> well, right. And then one of the one of the other um, soldiers walks up. And just... He's screwed. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Perfect. These, yeah, so these movies usually have a buy-in moment. Like every movie though, thus far has had a moment where, like, if the audience is on board, they're either on board for the whole thing or they're gonna like abandon ship, right? And this right. movie's tough in times in in terms of. When that buy-in, when that when that testing the audience patient moment is going to come, because yeah, when so Jason getting everybody getting frozen and going on the spaceship and getting discovered and there's all these like 
attractive people with a little bit of clothing um, doing stuff. I, I really do actually think it's the whole having sex and Jason wakes up moment is where you're like, you're like, yeah. because by the time you get to Uber Jason, like there's so much stuff has happened that you, right. like, you have to be on board at that point or, or you're just, you've already checked oh, out. Oh, absolutely. And that's the thing that interests me, I think, the most about the fact that this is so, like, regarded as one of the worst entries in the franchise by so many fans. And I just don't understand it because, like, I don't know what they wanted. Uh, it pays, not only does it have one of the greatest kills in the entire franchise, but it also pays homage to the greatest kill in the entire franchise in the, uh, the g fucking amazing VR thing that he gets put into where he, he kills the, the counselors who want to have premarital sex and smoke pot. And he, he recreates, it, to the next level, he recreates the sleeping bag kill, which everybody sort of, you either, you know, that one's either your favorite or it's top, at least top three for the entire franchise. Yeah, it's just banging a person in the sleeping bag against a tree or the ground. Right. And then, and it's a, what, it's a 90 minute movie. And for uh, 80 of those minutes, it's just Jason being Jason. And then you get Uber Jason for the last 10 or 15, but it's not like, that's the whole movie like it's it's a friday the 13th movie all the way through until he becomes uber jason which is just so stupidly aw <laughs> like it's so awesome but so stupid <laughs> which, which kill do you think is the the like you mentioned the two kills and you said it was like one of the greatest kills it was a different kill in the movie which one's that uh the cryo freeze oh, yeah. and then the smash on the on the table like that's probably that's probably number two for me for the entire franchise, and I know that's sort of blasphemous because you have all the work that uh, Tom Savini did on the, the early ones, but that's just, like, it's just amazing. It's cool. I mean, it was like it, like you can see it coming as soon as she's working next to a, a you know, an oh, open sure. sink of cryo of liquid <laughs> nitrogen, right. you know, and somehow being kept cold. Yeah. Like, oh, right. this is going to go bad for her. And yeah, I mean, right. yeah, you could. Yeah, it, Kane's presence as a, um, as as playing these sort of iconic horror characters. Yeah, he's intense, man. He's like a walking wall of muscle. Yes. I I really so it's really funny because everyone talks about you know people tend to talk about or movie nerds tend to talk about like when when is a franchise in trouble, right? And it's like okay, right? Was this is going to space the thing where you're jumping the shark or is it when you're versus someone else? You know what I mean? Because Freddy versus Jason was yeah. really good. I mean, there's a great bit that's sort of telling in the movie where the Sergeant Brodsky, who's played by Peter um, Mensa, is like, is, is leading the people trying to get Jason in the cargo bay and Jason stabs him through a mm. wall. It's going to take more than a poke in the ribs to put down this old dark. Oh. Yeah. I don't have to do it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, it's like, that's not an accident. Like, that, that would, nobody wrote that thinking this was going to be a serious death moment. You know what I mean? That's like a right, that's right. broad a wink to the camera as you can do. Of like, ha ha. Right. We're having fun Guys, here. It's okay. He just wanted his machete back. Absolutely. We should talk about how we get the Uber Jason. So when they when they recover Rowan and, and restore her using these nano machines. Um, there's this scanning table that does the scanning and then sends the machines out. So KM14 is an android that's built by one of the students. It ends up being like basically like a, a walking, talking real doll was really his intent for her. <laughs> right. And so when the spaceship is, is in trouble and uh, headed towards a space station, that actually gets destroyed because the, the Jason kills the pilot. So at some point they fuck, and and so she's <laughs> she's and, and it's she's like an android, and and she's like so the survival probability is twelve percent, and he kisses her. Statistical probability of survival just went up to fifty three percent. Wanna go for a hundred? And then he fucks her, and suddenly she's like this killing machine badass because she wants to save her man, right? She and, becomes a Terminator. <laughs> yeah, she's a Terminator, and she and she kills Jason. I mean, she kicks the shit out of him and shoots him, and then and then kicks him into yeah. one of these recovery tables that isn't completely broken, uh, which then fires up on its own, which I guess is Jason magic, and um, <laughs> and deploys the nano machines. Who then are like because Jason's head is gone at this point. 
and it's like well, we need to restore mm -hmm. Jason so let's just take metal from everywhere we can in the lab and then you have Uber Jason who's just chrome and black it's, and it's actually very cool looking <laughs> and then then it's an escape from the spaceship that's gonna blow up bit where uh, where Jason is hunting them what the hell is going on Jason fucking Voorhees that's what's going on the most cinematological uh, celebration of Canadian filmmaking um, you you would pair you'd have a double header of Jason X and the love guru oh yeah man oh god yes because there, there's movies that are Canadian as yep. fuck <laughs> and, 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 and malign yeah both uh, both are 1000% endorsed by divided by werewolves <laughs> <laughs> I think it's it deserves a second look. I think need, people need to give the movie another try, because if you go into it without the expectation of like, okay, this is going to be a big scary horror movie, and more that this is going to be mm. a fun, silly, campy celebration, right? Then, it, then you, if you yeah, take it on yeah. for what it is, then it's a lot of fun. Um, but, but I, yeah, I think I think for. For like your average horror movie goer who's heard of Friday the Thirteenth, this probably shouldn't be oh, your no. first one. But for fans of the franchise who dismiss this movie, it's it's definitely worth another look. Like just enjoy it for what it is. It's it's just fan service is all it is. Thanks for joining us on Jason X, Mitch, and we are now proud to have you as a member of the Church of the Moving Picture, and you are the padre of the Crystal Lake Confessional. Yeah. Welcome to the church. We love Jason X, and now I hope you do too. Like, share, and subscribe. Smash that bell and recycle your plastic. Where can we find you online, Mitch? You can find me online um, at dividedbywerewolves.com, my pop culture podcast that I do with my buddy Brandon. On my Twitter at Mr. Underscore Bones. And you can find me on Xbox more often than not at Mr. Bones underscore DBW. Check us out on Cinematological on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and Vimeo, or at Cinematological.com. Come back next month for a new bad movie I love and I want to help you love. Thanks for watching. Go love a bad movie.